Ladies and gentlemen, we uh, welcome you this evening to our WACAC Reno Virtual College Fair. My name is Jeff. Appreciate you being here tonight. We've got a number of institutions and uh, we will not delay. Just a reminder though that your cameras are turned off, your microphones are muted. If you have questions for the representatives at any time during the presentations, there is a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Please just type it. Uh, type in your question there and the, uh, the representatives will get back to you. So without further ado, I will turn it over to CSU Maritime. Okay, awesome. Hello, Renault. That's what my British Siri likes to call Reno when I'm driving there. Uh, my name is Mark McGee. I'm Director of Admission at CSU Maritime Academy or Cal Maritime, uh, or as our friends like to call us. And uh, so hopefully I'll tell you about some things about our school you won't hear from the other pre presenters because of our unique nature. Uh, we are part of the big California State University system uh, but we love Nevada folks, and we also love, of course, the folks on the California side of the lake. Maritime means about the ocean, and an academy is just a focused school. Uh, so we're focused on a set of majors that feed into a group of professions, kind of like a culinary academy or a nursing school or something that's really got more fo focus than trying to offer 75 majors and being great at all of them. We offer seven majors, and we're definitely great at all of them. So I'll go ahead and continue here. That is our campus in Vallejo, California. That's Northern California, just head on 80 over uh, the Sierras and head towards San Francisco. And the first bridge you come to and you can first see water of the San Francisco Bay, that is Vallejo. It's a suburb for San Francisco. That is our campus. Uh, see some of our athletic fields. There's more that, that appears here, but uh, you can see academic buildings closer to the water. And you can also see a ship there in the distance. That is part of our campus as well, the Golden Bear, that I'll talk about later. It's the icon of our school, and it's a living, breathing, floating residence hall on top of a floating classroom building. So we'll go ahead and proceed here. And what makes us unique? Of course, we're unique among many colleges, but also the rest of the 23 CSU campuses, which are all quite large uh, and have just, they uh, have programs in many different areas. We are a traditional camp, a college campus with bachelor's degrees, but we're very linked into the industries and companies that our students graduate into. So they help uh, us adjust what we teach and how we teach it to make sure our students are highly desirable when they graduate. Now, we're not a military school, although you'll see uniforms in our brochures. Those, what the students wear day to day during the class day is more evocative of professional attire. They're dressing like they already have the job they want. Uh, so we're a professional school, not a military school. And size matters at Cal Maritime, not the biggest. We're actually the smallest of the 23 CSU campuses. And that probably is smaller than your high school. And that makes sense for us. It's an intimate atmosphere. And we share a lot of good uh, aspects or attributes with private schools, like a small class size and professors who know who you are. That's considered a little bit unusual for public institutions. Uh, everything we do is hands-on. That's a hallmark of the CSU system from literally designing things as an engineer to really building them uh, to uh, actually steering a ship if you're in a major that's going to br bring you into uh, working on a vessel. Uh, so we really kind of bring things out of the textbook and the uh, theoretical life into actual application. And the job opportunities are one of the reasons why students go through a little extra effort at Cal Maritime to graduate. So seven majors here. I won't go into all of them, uh, but we'll go ahead just to say our business major is not your average business major. It's about logistics and the supply chain and making sure things get from where they're made to where they're sold. And uh, it's the golden age of logistics. Just think about when you were trying to find toilet paper or sanitizer at the begin beginning of COVID. So the supply chain is very important. Global studies is our politics meets seawater major. It's for people interested in helping the environment through writing legislation or through law, being a lawyer that kind of oversees ocean affairs and also a someone in politics like in the State Department. Oceanography is the scientist of the ocean, studying the effects of global warming and pollution on the ocean. And then we have three types of engineering that are very specific, very hands-on, working at big power plants or hospitals, marine engineers where you're an engineer aboard a ship 
and that's great because you get to travel. And then we have mechanical engineers that help design things uh, in buildings we all use. And then finally at the bottom, marine transportation, that's to actually become a ship captain. You don't graduate at that level, but you're on the career path when you graduate uh, for uh, marine transportation. We're all about leadership at our school, tangible forms of leadership. This is a secret sauce that makes our graduates so attractive to employers. We have traditional uh, kind of uh, units of leadership, whether being running the residence halls or elected government, student government positions, and also our core of cadets, which is the entire student body that's organized by major. It's association by major around our campus. And again, not saluting, not marching, uh, but uh, the students do kind of act professionally, showing up places on time, working well with others, and uh, following through on commitments to make sure they're a good graduate once they, gra they leave the school. Our wind energy competition team there, uh, what kind of a um, device they've built a wind tunnel that they're staring at. Some of our students, uh, not in the traditional day-to-day -day uniform, but these are some students who run the residence halls to kind of show you they're a happy, diverse bunch on our campus. All of our students study internationally. It's built into their graduation requirements. In some majors, you go on a traditional study tour for a month with a faculty advisor. It's an intern, excuse me, it's all field trip based. And uh, you're taking classes in your major while you're over there the month of May after your sophomore year. But if you're in engineering or marine transportation, uh, you actually travel internationally, not on a plane, but on our own ship that was in that first photo I showed you. That's the Golden Bear, Sleeps 300. And when you leave the campus the day after the spring semester, you go out for 60 days and they have international ports as destinations. And you're running the vessel, you're gaining skills, you're taking classes, and you get to actually visit the ports uh, uh, that are on the itinerary. So it's really invaluable uh, for what you need to graduate, in some cases get your license as well as a bachelor's degree, or just become a better person in your occupation, in your field. So our campus, after a little shower, you can see some of the water poking through there. That's, uh, but the outcomes at Cal Maritime are fantastic. Thank you, Jeff, I see you. I just wanna mention that uh, our students are in high demand. These companies you see here on the screen may not be household names, but they're big in the uh, majors where our students are learning. And they're nonprofits, for-profits, government agencies, uh, places that will locate you around the world or in your own backyard. And the outcome is, well, these are students about to graduate, so they're looking, they're doing a little move there for the camera. Uh, but over 90% of our students are employed in their major by six months after graduation. That's just when we take the snapshot. Almost everyone has multiple offers very quickly after graduation, if not before, again, because they're in high demand. And finally, uh, these are some ways to contact us. Uh, we're just finishing up our preview week, but uh, uh, where we have seminars online, uh, webinars. But if you go to that website now, you'll see recordings that were just made uh, of different majors and different aspects of the school. If you want a, a virtual tour visit, we've got a website there, our website slash visit. Uh, and hopefully you'll add yourself to our contact list as well. So that's the information. And Jeff, I am done. Thanks so much, Mark. Okay. Next up, we have Loyola Marymount. Good evening, everyone. My name is Charles Mason. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions. Thank you very much for taking time to visit us today, this evening. What I'd like to do is kind of share some information about LMU with you tonight. We're happy to be here. I want to kind of go through the slides. That way you can get a sense of LMU.
Loyola Marymount University is located, located in Los Angeles. We are a Jesuit university. The average class size at LMU, 19. Faculty student ratio is 10 to one. We actually are on top of a hill, commonly known as the bluff, overlooking the Pacific Ocean. We're, we're located in a specifically an area called the Silicon Beach area. Being a Jesuit university, LMU prides itself on academic excellence, education of the whole per person, being men and women for others. We have over 60 different majors. Our majors fall under either colleges or schools. To kind of give you a sampling of our majors, College of Liberal Arts, we have majors such as psychology, journalism, international relations, College of Business, marketing, finance, accounting, entrepreneurship, College of Communication and Fine Arts, Sci actually communication studies, we have studio arts, dance, music, School of Film and Television, film production, screenwriting, recording arts, Seaver College of Science and Engineering, engineering, biology, chemistry, computer science, The student experience at LMU, our students are very active and involved, over 200 clubs and organizations. We have 19 resident halls and apartment complexes. We also have nine different dining locations on the campus. We are a division one sports team. Also, we have a variety of different jobs for students, over 5,300 employment positions on the campus and 1,500 vetted internship opportunities for our students. Our students are committed to community service, devoting over 200,000 hours in community service. We also have an amazing study abroad program. This is the prime location of LMU. You see, we're located very close to the world famous Venice Beach, Santa Monica Beach and Pier, not far from Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Staples Center, home of the World Championship Lakers. This is where we're located just 15 minutes south of LAX, or perhaps even less. We're in a prime location because we're located in an area called the Silicon Beach area, similar to Silicon Valley in Northern California. Below our campus are companies like Google, YouTube, IMAX, Microsoft, which allows for great opportunities for our students to do internships, to do research. We have an Office of Career Professional Development that helps students plan for their career. Our graduates and students do internships at the following companies and corporations. The outcome of an LMU education, 99% of all LMU undergraduate students have a positive outcome such as employment, graduate school within six months of graduating. Supportive services, we have the Academic Resource Center, Intercultural, Intercultural Student Services, Disability Support for our students, and Student Psychological Services. So we're happy to answer any questions. And if you have those, we have regional, college, and school presentations. If you want more information on the university, on admissions specifically, undergraduate admissions, admission at lmu.edu, transfer at lmu.edu, international students, international at lmu.edu. And you can follow us, various platforms, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, all of the different particular websites you're able to follow us. That concludes my presentation. We hope that you have questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Charles. Appreciate that very much. Obviously, for the attendees, don't forget you can ask questions in the Q&A box below uh, at any time for any of the institutions. Next up, um, I present you to the uh, University of California, Irvine. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And again, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Brian Ju, and I'm uh, one of the directors for marketing and outreach for uh, the undergraduate admissions office at UCI. Um, I just wanted to do a quick, I only have six minutes, I wanted to do kind of the top six things uh, about UCI. So we're going to try to run through this in six minutes here. 
Um, just to give you an overview of the campus, though, we are right in between LA and San Diego in Orange County. Um, we are a top 10 public university, and we are, uh, we, you can see kind of the rankings there, five miles from the beach. We have over 150 majors and minors to choose from. Uh, we're one of the top five most applied to universities in the U.S. Um, one third of all Fortune 500 companies are located in Irvine. So number one is obviously we're talking about location and just to orient yourself here um, amongst the other uh, nine UCs that you see right here. Um, we're located in Orange County. There's a little park called Disneyland that's about 10, 10 minutes away from us. Uh, you have access to beaches. You kind of see a little bit of the locale. It's Southern California. You get 280 sunny days a year. You get um, just a kind of a great uh, atmosphere. The most important thing, too, is that um, the city of Irvine itself has been consistently ranked as one of the top safest cities in America based on the FBI crime statistics. So this is our 14th year in a row where uh, we're ranked in terms of safety. We're also obviously just 10 minutes from the beach. So Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, Huntington Beach, um, those are all beaches that are really close, and a lot of students do choose down to live by the beach during the school year. Number two is our interdisciplinary approach. And what this really means is that um, our campus is set up so that we want you to interact with just different disciplines. If you kind of have that interest between business and maybe computer science, we have a major called business information management that's for you. We have um, a, a game, computer game design and interactive media major. So that's combining kind of the arts and design with computer gaming and programming. So the, the campus is set up in a way where we want you to kind of interact. And that's why our campus is set up in this giant circle here, as you can see. All the academic units, all of the buildings surround this circle here. And even though we have 30,000 undergraduate students, 7,000 graduate students, it doesn't feel like a big campus because of the circle here. You're always walking around and running into students. Um, no discipline is kind of off on its own area. So it actually promotes this interaction as well as a sense of community. You can kind of see the different schools that we offer here. All of our majors are organized under these schools. So you can see we range anywhere from School of the Arts, Computer Science, Education, Engineering, Business. Um, we have a big area in health sciences for our College of Health Sciences that also includes nursing, pharmaceutical sciences, and public health. Um, and then, of course, all the uh, typical hum uh, majors in humanities, social sciences, physical sciences. My major was criminology, which was a unique major at UCI. Um, and then if you can't think from anything, we have undergraduate undeclared. The number three uh, uh, thing about Irvine is that, uh, yes, there's definitely a lot of companies, just as uh, other uh, of my uh, fellow colleagues have talked about. What else is in Orange County? You will recognize a lot of these uh, logos and companies here. They're located right there. They, we have three career fairs every single year that uh, has um, different companies coming out to recruit UCI students. I can name uh, alumni that has gone on to um, an internship or a job opportunity with any of these companies uh, that you see here. The fourth is really just the return on investment. Um, our student success rates, you can see 94% of our students uh, are uh, continue on after the first year. Our graduation rates are almost 70% for four year and about 85% for six year. Depending on your major, some, uh, some programs require you maybe an extra quarter it also depends if you're going to double major in any of these programs or minor or go abroad uh, or take advantage of, of any of those uh, kind of areas. I think the biggest advantage of the return of investment is really the alumni success. You know, being part of the, the University of California in terms of alumni, you're going to be set up for lifelong access to career services. UCI graduates have uh, ranked top among public universities for starting salaries. Um, as well as you're in a network of over 200,000 regular UCI alumni and 1.8 million of the University of California alumni. So we definitely have a reach that is definitely global. Number five is really our anteater spirit and active student life. Um, we are part of NCAA Division I, uh, the Big West Conference. We also have 40 plus uh, club sports and intramural teams. And uh, we're also being known as one of the top esports programs in the nation. We are actually one of the first uh, university uh, tier one universities to actually have um, a fully fledged esports program where we do offer scholarships for games such as League of Legends, Overwatch, or Super Smash on the Switch. We also have a dedicated arena that has um, a bunch of computer screens and stations, and even in between classes, you can stop by the esports arena, play a couple games, and then go back to class. On top of that, we have over 600 clubs and organizations, anything from 
uh, Greek sororities, fraternities, to uh, social clubs, to cultural clubs, to um, special interest clubs and volunteer. Um, so you can definitely get involved. We're also one of the most unique mascots, of course. No other university in the nation has our mascot, which is the, uh, the anteaters you can see here. Um, and finally, just talking about uh, what student life is like, um, UCI students have kind of their own unique version of fun. Uh, you can see right here, this picture is uh, one of our Guinness Book of World Records that we broke. So a few years ago, our students decided to break a Guinness Book of World Record. So this is the world's largest dodgeball game. Um, and then for some reason, another school decided to break that record. So we obviously had to reclaim our title. Since then, we have broke different records, such as the world's largest squirt gun fight, the world's largest pillow fight, the world's largest capture the flag game. So our students like to have that unique fun where you're not only just watching or being a fan of it, but you're also experiencing it and being a part of something that's bigger. Finally, uh, number six here is our diversity and inclusion. You say I ranked sixth in the nation for awarding bachelor's degree to minority students. We have a lot of uh, different services for uh, cross-cultural center, disability, international center, LGBTRC, and veterans as well. And you can kind of see that breakdown there. So if you have any other questions, uh, please go ahead and check out that website right there that has a complete brochure for out-of-state students. And again, thank you so much for your uh, time this evening. Thanks so much, Brian. Appreciate that. Uh, next up, we have University of California, San Diego. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, again, welcome everyone. My name is Corey. I'm an admissions officer at UC San Diego. Um, we do have just a short amount of time in here, um, just like the other colleges have mentioned. Um, so I do want to start with this slide that you see on the screen. If you have any other questions, go ahead and take a picture of this. Um, this is definitely the best way to stay connected with our Office of Admissions after this event. I um, highly recommend that if you have more questions and you want to speak to an admissions officer like myself in a one-on-one -on -one setting, um, sign up for a virtual advising session at the link right there above. Um, so I'll go through these slides fairly quickly. Again, you can also find uh, these similar slides and presentation um, information on our UC San Diego admissions YouTube as well. Um, so San Diego is America's finest city. Um, so this picture here is taken at our Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Um, it is a, where our, a lot of our marine biology students will spend some of their time at, on campus here at UC San Diego. Um, our campus, as you can see, is very close, just about under 10 minutes to the beach. Um, our campus is pretty big. It's 1,200 acres, which for comparison size is about twice the size of Central Park in New York City. Um, so even though UC San Diego is a big campus, um, we do have you know, very accessible um, options. We have our own shuttle system. Students like to bike or ride skateboards. Um, electric scooters are also very popular as well. Um, next up, I have some information about our different majors and disciplines that we offer at UC San Diego. Um, we offer over 140 different majors across eight different discipline areas. If you want to see a complete list of majors and disciplines, definitely visit our admissions website um, where you can get more info. Um, one thing I do want to highlight here on this screen is our CAPT programs. So these are the majors that you see in blue. Um, if you are a first year applicant and you were interested in one of these programs, you'll definitely want to list them as your first or second choice on the application for admission. Um, these programs are capped, which just means that they have um, enrollment capacity limits on them. Um, so we can't admit every student to engineering, for example. Um, so again, key takeaway, if you're interested in a capped major, definitely put it as first on the application. Um, these are just some rankings. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this slide. Just know that UC San Diego is a highly ranked, um, you know, top tier institution. Uh, we get a lot of applications every year, um, similar to our sister campus over in Irvine. Um, but one thing I do want to highlight here is that uh, UC San Diego students have a lot of opportunities to participate in undergraduate research. Um, that is something that a lot of students look forward to at UC San Diego. Um, again, look on our website for more information. Um, next up, we have information about our colleges. So our college system here at UC San Diego is very unique. Um, we have a system of colleges that is not grouped by major or by discipline. Um, it has no uh, connection to your major. So you can be in any one of our 140 majors, any of our eight dis di discipline areas, and be in any one of our seven colleges. Um, all colleges have essentially the same resources. They're set up the same, but they do have subtle differences. Um, they have their own philosophies, their own traditions. Um, for more information, again, visit our admissions website. You will be asked to rank our colleges on the application. Um, so you can find more information about them there. But again, you can be in any college in any major. Um, definitely want to make that clear because we get that question all the time. Um, this is just a quick snapshot of our undergraduate campus body at UC San Diego. So as you can see, we have just under 31,000 students, half men, half women. Um, Two-thirds are first year, um, and the other third come in as transfers. We also have students from over 
45 different states and 100 different countries and regions throughout the world. Um, I'll go ahead and skip past this one. This is just your average time to degree for both a first year and transfer student, um, four years and a quarter or two and a quarter for transfer students. UC San Diego is on the quarter system, um, not semesters. Um, next up, we have some info about living on campus. Um, again, the website is right there at the top if you want more detailed information. Um, nine out of 10 first year students at UC San Diego do live on campus. It's highly recommended. Um, definitely gives you a more well-rounded um, student experience on campus. Again, we like to think of our colleges as neighborhoods. Um, so if you live on campus, uh, you're not bound to your specific college or neighborhood. You can you know, access the entire campus. Um, our housing, dining, and hospitality, um, HDH, here at UC San Diego, they do a very good job of accommodating students, making sure they have everything they need. Um, next up, I want to talk about some student life at UCSD. So we have over 600 plus student organizations and clubs that students can choose from. Um, these will vary between you know, academic related, extracurricular. We have sororities and frats. Um, another ex exciting thing happening on our campus right now is that our athletics teams will transition to division one as of this year. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Hopefully they can start competing. Um, and then we have some campus events there on the right. Again, won't, through, won't go through all of them because we don't have a lot of time, but um, our students know how to have fun. These are just some you know, annual events that students definitely look forward to. Um, I'll skip past this one as well. This is just more stuff to do in San Diego outside of our campus. Um, but I do wanna highlight our campus community resource centers here. Um, so these centers are open to our entire campus community. And again, these are just spaces where students can come, stay connected, network with one another. Um, a lot of these centers will offer students jobs, internships, um, you know, just another good way, like I said, to stay connected uh, with other students on campus. <clears throat> um, briefly wanna talk about some first year requirements. Um, so again, don't have a lot of time, so definitely visit our admissions website. Um, but just know for non-resident students, you need a minimum 3.4 GPA. Um, and again, visit our admissions website for more information. We don't have a lot of time here, but just know UC San Diego uh, does do a holistic review of our first year applicants, which just means that um, your admission decision is not based on one factor. Um, it's not just your grades um, or your test score. Um, UCs are now test optional, um, so a test score is not required. Um, but again, your admission decision is not based on one factor. Okay, um, go ahead and skip past the transfer info. Um, did want to definitely talk about the application. Um, so for all of my seniors in the audience, you definitely want to make sure you apply to the UC campuses by November 30th. Um, there is one application for all of our campuses. So for example, if you're interested in uh, Merced or Irvine, which you will hear from um, after UC San Diego, all of our applications are on the same cycle. You definitely want to apply by November 30th. Um, and then again, Running out of time here, thank you, Jeff, but did want to go ahead and put this slide back up on the screen. Um, really, you know, feel free to take a picture, a screenshot, or write that email down um, or type that link in right now. This is going to be the best way to stay connected with our Office of Admissions um, with future events. And again, virtual advising sessions are another good way um, to pick, you know, an admissions officer one on one like myself and have us um, kind of advise you through the process. Uh, so thanks, Jeff, and I'll go ahead and pass it over to the next presenter now. Thanks so much, Corey. Obviously, students uh, and attendees, please uh, remember you can ask questions through the Q&A section uh, button at the bottom of your screen. Next up is UC Merced. All right, thank you very much. We are the newest campus in the UC system, so I'm gonna share with you a real quick video and then we'll go from there. Thank you.
All, all right, so let's let's go on from here. Let me give me a second here. Uh, so as as you, my colleagues have talked with you, University of California, we are actually the newest campus in the UC system. Uh, we are about 15 years old, and uh, our campus itself has has done a lot of a lot of things for the past 15 years. We are located in Northern California, or what we call the Central Valley, or in the heart of California, right smack right in the middle. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, but tell, I'm going to tell you that we are not surrounded by big metropolitan city. We are surrounded by a lot of agriculture. That agriculture actually offers a lot of opportunities for our students to attend our campus. And I'd like to say that UC Merced is, is in the middle of everything. So when you think about Sacramento, San Francisco, Santa Cruz, Monterey Bay, Fresno, and Yosemite, and keep in mind that UC Merced also is, is actually the, the only campus in the UC system that has a relationship with Yosemite in that, that we do have created a partnership with, with Yosemite by creating a, a uh, leadership program and a research station on the campus. In the past 15 years, again, we've, we've made a lot of strides as far as the campus is concerned. And as we grow, we wanna make sure that we offer the opportunities to our students as, as, as they attend our campus itself. What we offer on our campus, we have three colleges on our campus, the College the School of Engineering, the School of Natural Sciences, and the School of Social Humanities and the Arts. You're gonna notice a couple of things in here. We don't necessarily admit you based on your major. We, we admit you based on the college that your major is in. Uh, we, one thing that we do offer our students is an opportunity to come in undeclared in the, in the humanities or the science or engineer. And at the, on top of that, we also allow students to come undeclared general. You're not gonna be penalized just because you just came undeclared general. And the reason for that is because we say to ourselves that if you come to the university, especially our campus, is that we find out that most students, when they get to the university, 80% of the time, they're changing major three times. And that happens all over the country. And so therefore, we want to give the students the, the we want to empower them to make the decision as to what they want to do. Our most popular programs on our campus or the most sought out programs is mechanical engineering, computer science, biological sciences, management and business economics, and of course, psychology. We have about 25 minors along with these 27 majors. And one of the things that we just brought into the program into our campus is a new program for engineering and civil engineering. So as you see, our campus is, 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 is one, of the, one of the fastest growing universities and yet at the same time, one of the smallest. And one of the things that, that I will tell you right now, being the smallest, you're gonna get that kind of a, uh, a private school environment or feeling with the public outcome. When you think about the University of California, think of it this way. The University of California is considered to be one of the best, best public schools in the, in the world. So the University of California and Merced, you're going to have all these resources and let alone with this whole thing that's going on in our world and in our country and, in, and here in the state. When you when students talk about the University of California, for the most part, students would actually go to their lecture and then from their lecture, they would head over, over to a discussion in regards to, to make sure that they understood the materials. What UC Merced has done, they created a, a, a a system what we call UC Merced Dance, which provides opportunities to our undergrad students to develop friendships with other students and to engage in research at, and connect with professors and faculty at the university, thus allowing that support, that connection, that lifelong learning, and of course, that building of the community, okay? So one of the things that we wanna make sure that you understand is that we're committed to making sure that the student is, is well taken care of on our campus, let alone UC Merced does have about 200 clubs and, and, and organizations and growing, if you can't find a club on our campus, you could actually start your own club. All you need is three friends. And that's one of the things that we like to do. We also have sports on our campus. We belong to the NAIA. We're not at the NCAA level yet. But the benefits from being part of the NIA is that when we have these four sports on our campus, uh, men's and women's basketball, cross country, soccer, and volleyball, allows individuals to actually just come on campus and try out for, for, those, for those things. And again, one of the things that I want to tell you is that UC Merced is, a, is the fastest rising university within the UC system. And we want to continue to grow because we just finished our 2020 project and now heading over to a 2030 project. Our virtual events are coming up. Go ahead and take a picture of the QR for more information. I wish you the best of luck and, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks so much, Juan. Appreciate that. And our next institution is Humboldt State.
Okay, can, I, can you hear me okay? Sorry about that. So my name is Leo, I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Humboldt State University and Humboldt State University is located way up in Northern California. We're about five hours north of San Francisco and about an hour south of the Oregon border and we're right on the coast. So you can see in this photo, um, all the redwood trees, all the greenery, all that. Um, we're right, located right in Humboldt Bay. So we're maybe like five minutes from the water. Our campus is pretty small. We only have about 7,500 students in our entire, in our entire campus. And let me go to the next slide. So here's a little map of where we're, where we're located. Way up right on the coast, we've got the lagoons, the marshes, the oceans, the beaches, the mountains, and like I said, the redwood, redwood forest. So the big trees that you can drive a car through, that's kind of where we're located at, way up there in Ewok country. We're part of the 23 campus California State University system. So if you're gonna to apply to any one of the other CSUs, you can um, save that information and um, submit your application to, to, to any, any one of the other sister campuses using that same application. So that big building on top, the, the first um, slide that we saw there, our, the biggest building on campus was, uh, our campus was, was formed in 1913. So we're, we've been around for quite some time and the biggest building on campus faces the ocean. So we considered our front yard, the ocean and the lagoons and the beaches and the marshes and all that stuff. One of the unique things about Humboldt State is that we have um, this philosophy of ditch the desk and get out and do it because of where we live, because of the, the forestry and the oceanography and the marine bio, all the students in the photos up on the top, those guys are all in class. And so our average class size is only about 30 students per class. You're never gonna be in a class where there's a big lecture hall where you're gonna have 150, 200 students in class. They're all relatively small. So this is a marine bio class, environmental resources engineering class, oceanography. So we take full advantage of where we're located. And so in our backyard, we have a 1.5 million acre forest directly attached to, to our institution. So if you're thinking about zoology or wildlife or forestry or anything, environmental resources, engineering, anything like that, you're going to be getting experience with people in the field. You're getting this hands-on learning experiences with, with NOAA, with um, CAL FIRE, with CDF, with Redwood National State Parks. We have 13 different tribal communities located in our area where, we, where our campus is located on the traditional homelands of the WIA people. And we have 13 tribal communities. So you'll be able to get some knowledge, learning about traditional ecological knowledge, how do Native American communities sustain themselves for thousands of years prior to non-Native people arriving to our area. And so, so you learn about how, how a lot of the forest was maintained and, and um, working with some of the tribal communities, if that's what you choose to do. So our average um, age on campus is 24 years old. We're up in Arcata, California. So if you look at this map, we've got um, Bigfoot somewhere out here. Um, we got 15, uh, 12 hours from the Los Angeles area. I think from Reno, it's about nine hours away. And um, the average temperature, we're right on the coast. So we don't get to the 100 degree temperatures. The average in the summertime is 64. So if it gets 70 degrees in the summertime, I'm taking the day off because it's too hot. And then the winter time, we, don't, we haven't had snow in about seven years. And it's just because the ecosystem where we live, we live in a rainforest. And so in the summer, the fog rolls in, we get a lot of the ocean air and the water from, from, from Alaska. And in the winter time, the, the unstable air makes it to where we're, we're, never, we're never getting snow, but we do get um, 38 inches of rain. So the reason why we have all this greenery and all this beauty is because we live in a rainforest. And so that's something to remember. We're pretty rural, we don't have the big malls and clubs and all that kind of stuff. A lot of our students choose our institution because of location and because of the opportunities that, that they have in the outdoors. And so um, that's a big big part of what we're all about. Uh, about 56% of our students are first generation students. There's the numbers for the fir first time freshmen. Um, and the numbers from a lot of our students come from the Los Angeles area. And so um, you for Reno, you would be part of the WUI states. 5.4% of the students are from WUI. Uh, because of um, because of our, our our environment and because of where we're located in the commitment to like social justice and environmental justice, a lot of our students have take this graduation pledge with many universities have adopted um, across the nation to where when they graduate, they make a commitment to really think about um, 
how your how your job, whatever job you take, is is going to affect social and environmental justice. And so students really appreciate that. It, this was a, a student ran um, pledge that was put together, and it still continues to this day. We do have about fifty majors, twelve graduate programs, and again, the idea of ditch the desk because of where we live. You're going to get out. You're going to get the hands-on learning experience. The, the students up on top are in a fisheries biology class. So if you're going to take fisheries biology class, you're going to go out to the river. You're going to take samples of the water, algae samples, or you're going to take salmon scale samples and bring them back to the lab and, eva and evaluate them. There's the redwood trees right there. Students are in class. Um, and we have three different colleges, arts and humanities, natural resources and science, and then art, humanities, and social sciences. And so these are just a couple of class, just a couple of quick slides, just so students kind of have an idea of where, where we are. We do have the largest art community in the state of California per capita. So there's lots of artists, performers, sculptors, uh, musicians, um, because we know the earth without art is just eh. And so um, and it, these are just some general education. Um, you, again, you don't have to, like some of the other institutions, you don't have to declare a major when you apply to Humboldt State. You can come in as an undeclared and you can, um, you can take up to 15 classes before you have to declare a major. And so we do have a student-ran radio station. I'm just gonna click through some of these really quickly. One of the things about Humboldt is you don't have to be gra in graduate school in order to do research with your professor. And so a lot of our undergraduate students get the opportunity to start doing research before they're in graduate school. Again, it's because we're such a small college. Um, here's another just uh, um, general education. We, if you're think thinking about becoming a teacher, um, usually you'd have to go to get your undergrad, undergraduate degree in four years and then come back for your fifth year teaching credential. But here at HSU, we're able to get students to go through four years for their undergrad and get their credential in four years. So they don't have to have the fifth year. The way we do that is we have students go into the classroom right away, their freshman, their sophomore, their junior year. And then um, again, just undergraduate research in psychology. Um, we do have... Um, first time freshman programs called place-based learning communities. I'm just going through these really quickly. Again, doing research in our labs. We do have fire science. We're really big in our fire science program. This in our fire science lab, students are able to control the wind and the humidity and they get combustible materials from different forests from throughout the West. Throughout the West. And so they learn about how to manage fire. Um, we do have the only undergraduate oceanography program. So these students, again, are in class. They go five miles out into the ocean, take samples of the bottom of the sea, sea life, bring it back into, into the lab and evaluate it. We also have scientific diving where students go out to Fort Bragg and they get their science, scientific diving certificates. Um, we have a lot of support services for students, um, tutoring lab, student disability resource, the EOP program. We also have the culture centers and the academic and career advising center if you, have, if you need to find a job on campus. Um, again, 21 to one student to faculty ratio, our average, our average class size is only 30 students. The faculty are gonna know your name. They're gonna know what your, what your plans are after you graduate or if you wanna go on to grad school and um, they can like, write you letters of recommendation or, or um, really help you along your way. Just some- Leo, we need, to, we need to wrap it up here, I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing right now. Thank you guys very much. Do you want to put your uh, Do you want to put your contact information up at the end of the screen there? Yes. Let me go ahead and um, so here. If you guys go to the main Humboldt State University website, my cell phone, my direct line, my email, and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting with me at this site. So go to Main HSU Admissions. Go down to the bottom, meet the counselors, and you can meet with any one of the counselors here. Thank you guys very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Leo. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you for again being with us this evening and listening to these six institutions. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentation. A reminder that this has been recorded. Uh, you can access that recording on the same uh, page that you registered for this event. Uh, there are additional uh, virtual college fairs coming up. Feel free to jump in and learn about other institutions. Um, thank you for your time this evening. There will be a quick uh, survey at the end. Would appreciate you filling that out. Have a great rest of the evening. Good luck on your college decision. Have a good night, everybody.